If you're considering getting a Starlink satellite system, I would highly recommend it. Now for reference, I'm outside of Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and previously I was using a Telesmart Hub, one of these, for my internet service. Now I can't get internet brought into my home, I'm reliant on some type of a signal coming from the skies or cell phone towers. The main problem I was having with this is that this would not support multiple users and it wasn't very fast. We have six people in our home and multiple devices per person. We were constantly in a state of shutting Wi-Fi off of all the devices that didn't actually need to be connected at that moment so that whoever was in a conference call or taking a class could actually stay on the internet without being kicked off. No bueno. I was a little apprehensive about the Starlink because they're not cheap and there's mixed stories out there. But I have been incredibly impressed. Our previous speeds that we were getting were 20 megabytes download, 2 megabytes upload. The range that we have with the Starlink start at 60 megabytes download to 240 megabytes download. And yes, that is a big range, but when your lower end is 60, hey, I'm happy. And for upload speed, we are constantly between 10 to 40 megabytes per second. That's fast in my books, especially if you're doing online interactive things like Zoom meetings, podcasts, or just for uploading YouTube videos, the upload speed does matter, at least to some people. The one thing to consider with Starlink is that you will need to mount the dish somewhere outside and run a cable into your home, much like a satellite television system. The advantage these have is you simply plug them into the wall and make sure you can get a signal close to a window or something, and you got internet. I'll show you quickly how I installed mine and a couple things to think of if you're looking at getting one of these systems. So I'm up on a roof now and this is where we installed our satellite system and this is the basic mount that they give you. It works for most conditions. One nice thing with the Starlink is that you simply turn it on and it will find the satellite so you don't have to worry about where it's positioned. Now if you need to install it on a steeper pitch they do sell different types of mounts and even if you needed to put it on the outside of a wall uh, you can buy different brackets to set that up. Now the one thing I wasn't entirely sure of is if any of the trees around here would cause an issue. But Starlink actually has an app that you can download before you buy any of their products. And I sat right here, I turned the app on and I kind of scanned the whole sky. And it tells you if there are obstructions that you need to be concerned about. And not even the chimney came up as an obstruction. Or that tree. So for this installation, I simply put this bracket down here. I put a whole bunch of silicone underneath each point, And then I actually dip the screws in silicone so that when I penetrate through the shingles, they will seal themselves up. This thing also has a setting in which it will automatically detect snow buildup and heat up the surface to prevent ice from forming. And there's also a setting that you can just leave it heated the whole time. It does use more power, but Essentially, if you have a place that has a lot of precipitation, that might be the way that you'd like to operate this thing. You can also turn it off altogether so that it won't ever heat if you're not in the situation where you'd be worried about that. As you can see, we have snow and this thing is rated to work down to, I think, minus 20 degrees Celsius. We've had it at minus 26 and it hasn't had a single problem yet. I've talked to people who have experienced minus 32 degrees Celsius and their satellite has not stopped working. And after you've got your dish installed on the roof, this is the cable that you'll need to get down into your house. Now I was fortunate to have existing satellite cables that I could just follow down. I ended up coming along the corner here for the soffit and the siding where it meets, coming up into the soffit, ending up drilling a two inch hole in that header and pushed it right through some insulation into our utility room. And of course we're gonna fill in that hole with some great stuff expanding foam. I recommend you only do this if you feel very confident with the location of your satellite. And this is on the inside where it comes through and down. And currently we just have it sitting on the floor. The connectors on the bottom of the unit are very clearly marked and you can't really get these mixed up. Note, there are no indicator lights on the front of the unit. However, there is one on the bottom. And after running our cables, plugging everything in, it was just a matter of opening up the app, giving the network name a password, and boom, we were into fast internet speeds. Now, since the time we've had it, in two months, we haven't had a single outage. It hasn't dropped anything. It's literally been flawless for the last two months, and I feel very strongly that this is one of the best options available right now, especially for those of us who live rural. We can't get fiber out here. We can't get cable internet out here. Uh, it's just, that's just how it is, and this Starlink has absolutely changed the game. Our kids do school online, I do a lot of online things myself, and it's so nice not even worrying about whether or not you're gonna be able to get on, or which devices we're gonna have to turn on or off so that some people can be on and 
it's just amazing. It's worked fantastic, reliable, fast, and I would highly recommend Starlink. Uh, just to clear things up, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. I bought that satellite dish. I pay the monthly fees. It's not cheap, but it is good. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.